Okay, starting with the first AVP, how insane are those Xenoporks, seriously? Thank goodness the Predator disc can take them out in one fell swoop. It's pretty evil not letting you use any other weapon than the wrist blade and the spear gun against the queen, especially because there are also frickin' facehuggers in there. I believe I was actually lucky enough on at least one playthrough on Director's Cut to kill the queen, but then run out of spear spears for the spear gun, but then actually kill at least one of the facehuggers, the only one remaining, with the wrist blade. I couldn't believe my luck. Finding the queen as the marine is basically just the ending of Aliens, but it is still pretty fun, I think. I think really the only things from the movies that don't appear in this first game is really L.A. from Predator 2 and the Aurora from Alien Resurrection, and the Aurora is in AVP 2 in the multiplayer section. Moving on to Alien vs. Predator 2. I love that the three species meet. You know, the alien takes out the scientist currently testing stuff on the Predator. The Marine unlocks the Predator. How freaking cool is it and creepy that as you walk past the Predator after you've unlocked the thing, it looks at you. Its eyes and head clearly turn to follow you. Okay, so if I understand the stories correctly, Rykov is obsessed with the Predator, especially that one Predator that you play. Let's call him Prince Predator. The Predator currently known as Prince. So he waits for them and tries to figure out how to defeat them, including discovering that the EMP really works well against them, thus capturing Prince Predator. And they start running tests on Prince Predator, including blood work. They figure out that they could probably make a virus. Rykov wants to stop Prince Predator, but Prince Predator wins, defeats Rykov in the exosuit. But Dunya already knew Rykov's plans, and he had told her to pursue them, so she has, I think it was like five total, we're told, scientists that can work on a, to conjure up a virus, and they're going to try to find the Predators again and send one back, infected. Not with the T-Virus. Zombie Predators, what would that look like? And as we see at the very end, the Predator ship is pursuing the Verloc, so pursuing the Marines. Presumably to hunt. I love that the Predator ship also cloaks. Frosty is saddened that he couldn't get Tomiko out, but Tomiko actually took over for her brother Kenji, who was a corporate spy who had been found and killed, thus preventing his spying. So she uses Frosty as a mule to get the disc to whoever. You know, we find out, you know, extraction will be required. The Predator kills one of the queens, the Marine kills another queen, but there is a third queen, as we find out in the Alien campaign. Now, Eisenberg was the sole survivor, I don't know how he survived all those alien attacks, but whatever, of that one location, I don't really completely know what it is, and he has to eat some of his buddies to survive. When he gets back, gets back, his father turns him into a synth unit, you know, makes an android out of him. I guess he was hurt in some way, I don't quite remember the details. We find out at the very end that he is an android, that might also be why the Queen tells you to destroy THE Eisenberg, not just Eisenberg. And then they hang him up on one of their walls in the hive. And after his experiences, Eisenberg has a phobia of the Xenomorph. A Xenomorphobia, if you will. And this occurs right after you've defeated two Predators. This one does a really good job of building up. You know, before you fight Rykov in the exosuit, the exosuit is built up. You hear it kill. You pass its victims. As the alien, early on, you fight a predator, and right before that, you see it up on the ledges. I do think it would have been more interesting if that predator tries to tried to kill you as you... Because, honestly, each time I play, I find myself just standing there looking at it and trying to get at it, but they were too smart with the electric fence placement. And then the predator that hunts and kills several of your marine mates 
and then finally you kill it shortly after it begins hunting you. And finally, Animal vs. Predator 2, Primal Hunt. This cover is a lie. It is pure fabrication. This never takes place in the game. And why is that? I'll tell you why. That is because the pred alien actually comes out of that predator. How freaking lame is their handling of that? Don't get me wrong, that could have been really cool. They try to trick you, make you think that the predator wasn't face hugged, but it's so obvious that it was. It would have been so much more interesting if it realized that it was. And why did they have it do the stupid laugh as it dies and the self-destruct counting sequence? It doesn't actually self-destruct. I guess they just tied that into when it dies or something, but it's stupid. Anyway, think of how cool it would have been if there had been, you know, like a ticking clock. In one of the corners of the HUD, there had been, you know, this is how long is left before it's gonna chest burst you. You have to accomplish this before that. You don't feel like you accomplish anything in this. All the Predator does is attract Prince Predator. That's it. Ooh, and the loss of Pod 5 in all its boring glory. You just barely get to be Pred Alien at all, and then that campaign ends. It spends two-thirds of that on the way too difficult, primarily because of his poor level design that has you wondering where the hell you're supposed to go, face-hugging of the soul Predator, and then trying to hide as the chestburster, which you'll constantly fail at. You can't hide. So you'll just be running around, maybe occasionally biting some knee, and then you finally make it to the body bags. And as corporate, again, you really don't do anything. Yes, you turn off the device, but it turned off on its own before. And, I don't know, I think the aliens actually wind up having the artifact, but it's so freaking boring. All three of them are after this freaking artifact, and I guess the aliens get it, but that's it. In AVP2, you feel like you accomplish something, you do something. This would not have worked out well if you hadn't been there. Primal Hunt, no such luck. And the big climactic sequence that plays once you've completed all three sides is just... Ooh, the relic was maybe important, and this was why that woman was talking to Dr. Eisenberg. Also, the Russian accents in Primal Hunt are just atrocious. The voice acting is quite bad. The characters are boring. You don't really care about anyone or anything in this. How about as Dunya when you get to the APC? Um, thanks for helping, guys. You have guns. There were aliens behind me. Could you maybe have used those guns to help me? How about at the very beginning of the corporate campaign where the two buddies are killed? It's so embarrassing because... You just have to wait for them to get killed, and it takes a lot of aliens to kill them. Wouldn't it have made much more sense to not have any attacks before that point and then have the first two aliens really surprise them and kill them or something? It would have been lame, yes, but it would have been less painfully awkward and embarrassing. I mean, you're just standing there waiting for your friends to die so you can get further, because they're going to keep spawning aliens until those two guys die. I think the worst case of aliens just appearing is when you're in pod 5. Where are they coming from? Why are there so many of them in these weird little surges? Did anybody actually want to play as Dunya? She's kind of one of the villains, you know? Where men It's also just really stupid how where when Dunya and the Predator are sort of going the same way. In this they try too hard to make them almost meet the three species. I think the worst case is how there are a ton of predators running around when you're the face hugger, but when you're the predator there's a ton of aliens around and no predators in sight. How freaking weak was it that as a predator one of the first missions is go deeper into the hive and find the queen and then you walk, you get on an elevator, get back off the elevator, walk five steps there's a huge abyss, you can't possibly get any further, then you're told, oh wait, turn back around. There was no point for the whole using the elevator and going those couple of... 
that's another thing. There are so many objectives in this that are just cancelled. Again, you never feel like you do anything. You're just constantly on the way to do something, and then you find out, oh, I wasn't supposed to do that. Or it's really, really easy to do once you actually get there. Anyway, those were my thoughts on the first two Alien vs. Predator games and Primal Hunt. Is there something there?